the word bank is an utter shock as after Ibrahim Traore's recent executive order. His pivotal move is poised to revolutionize Burkina Faso, simultaneously striking a significant blow to France and French financial entities entrenched in the exploitation of the nation. These institutions have been draining the country dry through illicit money laundering operations that benefit French corporations leveraging Burkina Faso's resources. In a bold maneuver, Traoré has introduced Burkina Faso's inaugural state-owned bank. This establishment stands as a beacon of the nation's economic and financial autonomy. The unveiling of this treasury deposit institution marks a potential initial stride towards shedding the shackles of the neocolonialist CFA currency, a tool that has long entrapped the country in economic subjugation. Traoré stands out among the African leaders by demonstrating a steadfast commitment to fulfilling his pledges. This commitment was exemplified by the inauguration of Burkina Faso's landmark Treasury Deposit Bank, located in Ouagadougou, the capital of this West African nation. Treyer's spokesperson underscored the institution's core principle of integrity, positioning it as both a practical tool and a symbolic representation of Burkina Faso's economic and financial self-governance. In a country beleaguered by persistent terrorist threats since 2015, which have precipitated severe disruptions in the economic, social, and political spheres, Traoré's establishment of the bank heralds a transformative initiative. The president highlighted that this financial institution would prioritize proximity to the citizens, fostering a more inclusive approach to financing and structuring projects and programs. Importantly, it aims to emancipate the nation from the exploitative and parasitic financial assistance historically extended by Western entities like the International Monetary Fund IMF, and the World Bank. Traoré's aversion to succumbing to the onerous conditions typically attached to loans from the IMF and the World Bank echoes the principled stance adopted by Thomas Sankara, Burkina Faso's revered former leader. Sankara staunchly refused external loans from these institutions choosing instead to fund the country's developmental projects solely from domestic resources. His unwavering stance against the debt entrapment orchestrated by Western powers ultimately led to his tragic demise in a coup orchestrated by France. He is the strongman who ascended to power through a successful coup in September 2022, has been strategically maneuvering to steer Burkina Faso towards self-sufficiency and independence from Western dominance. As the leader of the ruling junta, he has actively encouraged public and private development organizations and economic actors to engage with the newly established bank, emphasizing the collective construction of a self-reliant economy that serves the nation's developmental interests and preserves its sovereignty. His vision aligns with his overarching goal since assuming leadership in 2022, liberating Burkina Faso from the clutches of neocolonialism and imperialism that have historically stifled its progress. Following its independence from France on August 5, 1960, Burkina Faso, like many former French colonies, grappled with enduring vestiges of French influence that hindered true self-determination. His principled stance against French policies has triggered a mass exodus of French companies and banks from Burkina Faso, illustrating the palpable fear instilled in these entities by the resolute leader. Notably, Société Générale, France's third-largest listed bank, opted to divest its subsidiaries in Burkina Faso to the Pan-African banking group Vista Bank Group. Additionally, Vista Bank Group acquired BNP Paribas operations in Burkina Faso, signifying a shift in the financial landscape. Burkina Faso's status as France's sixth-largest trading partner in Sub-Saharan Africa in 2021 underscores the significance of Traoré's actions in reshaping the country's economic trajectory and reducing external dependencies. By fortifying Burkina Faso's economic autonomy and fostering a climate of self-reliance, Traoré's administration is forging a path towards a future where the nation can chart its own course, free from the shackles of neocolonial exploitation. Burkina Faso hosts around 50 subsidiaries of French companies, with approximately 70 French entities holding stakes or interests in the country. Within this landscape, about 50 French business individuals are notably active in the hospitality and tourism sectors. Furthermore, France has historically stood as Burkina Faso's primary bilateral donor and was categorized among the 19 key nations in France's development policy priorities. In a decisive move on January 18, 2023, 
Traoré terminated the 2018 bilateral accord concerning the status of French military forces stationed in Burkina Faso. Subsequently, on February 28, 2023, he also revoked the 1961 agreement pertaining to technical military support. The withdrawal of French military personnel from Ouagadougou was successfully concluded on February 19, 2023 following a transparent process conducted in collaboration with Burkina Faso's transitional authorities. Additionally, Traoré took a firm stance by expelling French diplomats on grounds of engaging in subversive activities. His administration further suspended operations of French media agencies within the country, citing the dissemination of false information aimed at fomenting unrest and destabilizing Burkina Faso. In September, Niger, alongside fellow ECOWAS members Burkina Faso and Mali, established a military coalition known as the Association of Sahel States. For months later, the trio made headlines by withdrawing from the larger bloc, denouncing the sanctions imposed on them as illegal, illegitimate, inhumane, and irresponsible following a coup d'état. Rumors began circulating about a potential disengagement from the neocolonial West African franc currency which has historically bound over 14 former French colonies in economic subjugation. Traoré hinted at forthcoming transformations that could surprise observers, indicating a possible shift in Burkina Faso's monetary policies and currency arrangements. These developments underline Traoré's commitment to steering Burkina Faso towards greater economic autonomy and challenging long-standing structures of dependency on former colonial powers. Traoré aims to sever all ties that perpetuate his people's subjugation, signaling a broader effort beyond just currency reforms. The establishment of the new bank marks a pivotal step towards bolstering Burkina Faso's financial and economic independence. Together with the leaders of Niger and Mali, Traoré envisions a revamped currency as a symbol of their collective sovereignty. These Sahel states are actively reclaiming their autonomy, rejecting their designation as France's perpetual financial resource. While a concrete timeline for implementing currency changes remains uncertain and alignment on this issue varies among the triad, the new state-owned bank represents Burkina Faso's initial stride towards autonomy. By disentangling themselves from ECOWAS and the CFA franc, a currency devised by France in 1945 for its African colonies, Burkina Faso signifies a break from a system that historically granted France substantial economic and political leverage over its former colonies. Originally denoted as Colonies Françaises d'Afrique or French Colonies of Africa, the CFA franc arrangement enabled France to wield control over currency convertibility and monetary policies post-independence in the 1960s and 1970s. Traoré's leadership in Burkina Faso has been marked by a bold departure from the country's historical entanglements with France and the CFA franc, signaling a significant shift in economic and geopolitical dynamics within the region. For decades, the CFA franc, now known as the West African CFA franc or Community Financière Africaine CFA, was lauded by government officials as a tool for ensuring monetary stability, fostering economic integration, and enhancing overall economic performance. However, a series of successful coups across West Africa, including six since 20120, have reshaped the narrative, fueling anti-French sentiments and calls for change. The rise of coups paralleled a period of escalating insecurity in the region, prompting governments to criticize French forces for what they perceived as insufficient collaboration in combating armed groups. As tensions mounted and relationships soured, countries in the region began to seek new allies, with growing demands for the termination of ties with France and the adoption of a fresh currency gaining traction. Traoré, the military leader of Burkina Faso, recently made startling allegations, claiming to possess evidence of a concerted campaign orchestrated by France to destabilize his country, purportedly with support from Benin and Ivory Coast. He singled out the leadership of Benin and Ivory Coast, suggesting that forthcoming evidence would unveil the presence of two French bases in Benin allegedly targeting Burkina Faso. He asserted that concrete proof had been gathered, including audio recordings purportedly linking French agents in Benin to terrorist activities. In response to these alleged threats and manipulations, Traoré's administration swiftly annulled military and bilateral agreements with France, 
accusing the former colonial power of not only failing to effectively combat terrorism but also actively working to undermine Burkina Faso's stability. While staunch supporters of the CFA Frank argue that pegging the currency to the euro serves as a safeguard against inflation, critics have long decried the obligation for the Central Bank of West African states to deposit a significant portion of its foreign exchange reserves with the French Treasury. This requirement has been widely regarded as emblematic of a subservient relationship to France, perpetuating neocolonialist structures that impede economic autonomy and hinder development in the region. Despite facing numerous threats on his life, Traoré has remained resolute in his commitment to liberating his people from what he perceives as France's oppressive influence. His actions include the revocation of gold and mining licenses held by Western corporations, the expulsion of French diplomats, and the exposure of alleged clandestine activities involving the French military within Burkina Faso. Through these decisive measures and substantial investments in development projects, Traer aims to uplift the lives of Burkinabi citizens and guide the country towards greater self-sufficiency. The establishment of a new treasury bank under Traore's leadership represents a strategic move toward enhancing Burkina Faso's financial independence. This institution will facilitate the localized investment of state funds and enable counter-cyclical lending to stimulate economic growth and development. Traoré's initiatives have sparked widespread debate and garnered both support and criticism. As Burkina Faso navigates this transformative period, the implications of Traoré's policies and actions on the nation's future trajectory remain a subject of intense interest and discussion. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.